was like filth and grime that builds up. You know, when you're out there working and it builds up on you. If you, don't, if you don't take time to bathe, if you don't take time to get in the shower and bathe your body and clean your head, it builds up dirt and grime. And then after it sits for a while, it begins to stink and the stench. And then it begins to get harder to get off of you. Amen. And that's what the world has done to a lot of people because they've been Italian in the world and they've not said, but and the soaking services and not spend time in the prayer closet and not spend time in the word and not spend time on their face and not spend time in the house of God and not spend time in worship and because of that the grime of the world and the dirt of the world is on the people and that's why there's a stinkness in the earth that's why there's a hardness God says I'm looking for the, for the seedbed let me say something. It's not hard for you to be dirty. Because, number one, that's what you were made out of. That's why God had to remake you. Do you hear me? That's why God had to remake you. Behold, you are now a new creation. That's why Jesus, the Son of God, was never made out of dirt. That blood flowing through him was precious blood. It was not the blood of bulls and goats. It was the blood that brought forth the new covenant that pleased God so much that he rent the veil of the temple. Hallelujah. Part of that, every, every, every believer, every believer in the old covenant could not be born again. It could not be a new creation. Amen. Because the blood of bulls and goats could not satisfy God because it was still dirt. It was still crime. That's why if we're going to be pleasing to God, we've got to come to purity. And I'm going to tell you some folks, the only way to get real pure is to go through trial. A faith that can't be tried and tested can't be trusted. We want an easy way. If it gets a little hard, we think, but that's not God. That can't be God. If it gets a little tough, that can't be God. If it gets a little, you know, taxing to us, that can't be God. If I have to sacrifice to make this happen, well, that can't be God. Because God is easy. Everything about God is easy. It's easy. No, no, no. Let me tell you something about God. It's not always a bed of roses serving Him. Why? Because we are living in an unfallen world. And our body is still an unfallen, I mean, it's still in a fallen nature. That's why the adoption has not yet come to completion, but it will soon. When Gabriel blows the trumpet, it will be changed in a moment. And the instant of a twinkling of an eye. But until then, you still got to deal with it. You got to go through that trial time. And in the midst of the trial, that's the testing. That's God determining. Are they going to remain dirty? Or are they going to come into the shower? Are they going to take a bath in my glory? Or are they going to keep tasting the world? Are they going to keep, keep listening to the voice of the world? Because sin, the Bible says, is a pleasurable thing for a season. And for some people, that season has never ended. It's been long and enduring. It's been a cold, long winter. They wonder when fall's coming, when the springtime is coming. When is it going to come? I'm going to tell you when it's going to come. When you make up your mind that you're tired of being dirty. When you make up your mind that you're tired of being uh, uh, messed up. When you make up your mind that you're tired of being abnormal, that you're tired of being just, just going through the mediocre things, when you make up your mind that you want the fullness of God and that you want God, amen, to rain down on your life, amen, let me tell you something. That's when God's going to pour out on you His fire and His glory. But folks, before He does, He will test you to see if you may. Some of us right here right now are right in the middle of it. Right in the middle of it. I was 
make it to this house this morning. It's a prophet of God. Some of us are right in the middle of, of knowing whether we've done the right thing or the wrong thing. So what are you talking about, Pastor? There's people that have made decisions based on their feelings, based on their desires, based on their ambitions, and not based on truth, not based on the Word, not based on integrity, not based on honesty, not based on doing the right thing, but based on what they want to do. And that never pleases God. He's a God of order. He's a God that demands obedience. If you study Hebrews 11, every person in there in the Hall of Fame of Faith had to go through the test before they could be trusted. Abraham, I'm going to make your father a nation, but my wife can't have no children. God told my wife through your daddy before she ever had Jordan that your son is a man of God. That's what your daddy told my wife. And everywhere we went, all over America, people, prophets, Shambach, and other men of God, laid their hands on her, and laid their hands on him, and said, this is a prophet, a man of God. And the devil has told me over and over and over, you have to live with that the rest of your life. Folks, I don't believe it for one moment. I believe the Word of God. Believe His prophet and it shall happen. I'm standing on the promise of God. And my son is getting ready to rise up. I'm going through the trial. I'm going through the test. But guess what? I'm standing on the promise of God. And it shall happen. It shall come to pass. Because I believe it. Let's set the Word. Let's set the Word. I'm not giving up. I'm not turning back. That's right. I'm not saying no. I'm not saying God, I, I, I'm tired of this. I'm saying God, you can trust me. Yes. You can trust me. I don't care what I have to go through. I don't care what I have to face. Have I ever failed a test? Yes. Have I ever failed a trial? Yes. Have you? Yes. yes. You see, there's too many people that are not being honest with themselves. Well, I know, I know, I, I, I've never done that. That's why you can't get blessing. Because you won't be honest. Come on now. <laughs> That's why sometimes it really gets me when you give an holy call, everybody just kind of looks. Like, I wonder when, when they're going to go. And God is just ringing your heart, right in your chest, and you think, my God, I wish they would hurry up and answer God so this thing would leave me. <laughs> I've been there. I've been there as a preacher. I've been there as an evangelist. I've been there as a prophet in revivals when people were out there getting healed and dancing and shouting and me on a high platform. And God said, step down and dance before me. And I'm standing up there wanting to display a gift. God said, get out there and dance before me. And my heart's ringing. I'm thinking, boy, I wish somebody would obey God. Because, man, I sure, I'm feeling this. And I, I, I sure wish, come on, church, I obey God. And God's telling you to do it. Never forget that. Try to preach without God. It's like trying to push rope through a hole. Mm, it ain't going to happen. There's too many preachers right now that are preaching with no anointing. There's too many churches that have lost the fire. There's too many saints that have tried up. There's too many people that have not turned. Amen. They've not failed. They've not, they've not obeyed God in the testing season. And they failed their test. They failed their trial. And they've gone back the other way. They looked the easy way out. I want to tell you, don't look the easy way. Look the God way. God's way is the right way. How is the God way? God's way is to do what He says and stick to it. Stick to it. Listen. 